So once again, good morning, everyone. I want to say thank you to everyone for being here today. I truly, truly appreciate it. Today, what I want to talk about is, you know, we, we were talking about position trading and, and did that class on position trading with the combined room of hit run candlesticks and right way options uh, on position trading. And today I really kind of want to focus in on the particulars of option trading with those uh, longer term positions. Now, I get lots of questions when I start talking about this. And, and I know there's folks out there that really wonder if I actually do this. And I, I actually do this. I do this a lot, as a matter of fact. And I help, now not necessarily with options, but I help um, other family members of mine and some friends and, and things with their portfolios to passively trade um, using position uh, position type trading. And let's let's take a second here. I think there's some confusion sometimes as what is position trading? And position trading is is really um, slowing it down. Now, I'm not talking about the buy and hold. I'm not talking about picking up something and just holding it forever. And I'm certainly not talking about tomorrow you go out and put together a portfolio of these kind of trades. It's something you work into. And position trading can, um, I, I would say probably by and large, the positions last several months, but they can last several years as long as the trend continues. Now, remember, one of the primary philosophies behind this is you have to you have to have that that understanding that institutions, all of that institutional money, is where those um, good stocks like um, Microsoft, whoops, or stocks like Microsoft find their energy, find their consistent support by institutions. If retail traders were the only ones behind this thing, it would be a jumbled mess. Okay, so it requires that little bit longer look at a chart and it requires some patience in the trade and that's one of the hardest things for people to to deal with um, is 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 deal with the patience that it requires to stick with a trade like this but I think a lot of people have the misimpression that position trading means you cannot take profits okay and when you trade, when you position trade with just, just stock only, taking profits is not nearly as easy as it is with options. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So what we're looking for in these trades is we're looking for those trends either beginning or continuing. Now, when I say beginning, I'm talking about those stocks that are just starting to turn back up. Um, you know, John L. mentioned um, Ford this last week. Ford being one of those stocks that may be just starting to turn itself, turn that corner back up to move higher in the trend. The continuations are, are stocks like uh, Visa that just keep going. And we have no idea how long it can go. And as a matter of fact, we don't want to try and predict how long it will go because we would be wrong. How far back? And Visa just continues to go up. Okay. At one point in time, Nike was just like that. Nike just was just up and up and up and up and up. We had these minor or these consolidations and protracted pullbacks, but then the stock would just resume these big upward trends. And there's lots of stocks like that in the market. As a matter of fact, they're around us all the time. And the only way the market can continue to go up like it has been is because the institutions are continuing to support these trades. 
<clears throat> so as long as you can kind of get behind that idea, then you have an opportunity to start seeing the market in a little bit different way. And um, I want to kind of get into a little bit of the plan here, what, um, what I'm talking about, and a little bit of how we go about setting this up, okay? So I'm just going to use this black screen here just to, to write out a couple of things. Now, most people, if you're swing trading, most people you're going to find have, are very underinvested in the market. And I think we talked about this just a little bit yesterday. But how many people in here ever have more than 50% of their account into the market? And the answer to that is probably a very tiny percentage of folks have the majority of the money, their money in the market. And so what that means is, is we're, we have a lot of capital sitting on the sides, right? Lots of capital. And wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be wise to put some of that to work, but put it to work in a way that doesn't require all that stress and high focus that you would have to do in swing trading or day trading or anything like that. We want to get that little bit, uh, a little more of a restful method of putting trades on because we don't have the time. I don't know if you're like me, but I, I literally do not have the time to, to swing trade everything that I've got in capital because there's just not enough time in the day. You cannot get through enough places. I mean, I could certainly increase the size of my positions large enough that um, I could have most of my capital in the market all the time on swing trades, but I'm going to tell you this, that's never going to happen. And I'm pretty sure that probably wouldn't happen with either one of you, with any, any of you guys as well, putting, you know, um, 10, 15 plus percent of your entire portfolio into a single swing trade. Probably not going to happen. So what we want to do is we want to find that way that's just a little bit more passive and, and, and take some of that capital that's setting aside. Now, one of the things I want to ask you is, what if, does anyone think in here if you found, um, could you handle three positions just to kind of start off? Could you handle three positions? And let's say we can find three positions that average around $500, the cost to get into those with an option. Could you take that $1,500 and you'll, you'll have to segment out a piece of your account for this. $1,500, $2,000, $2,500, maybe a little bit more out of your portfolio to just hold a few longer term trades. See, and I think most people have that capital available where they can put that small portion together. Now, what we want to do, and I don't want you to, you know, stay with three forever, but this is the idea of getting you started or going down that path. And, and this is really the thing that started me down this path with position trading. I started looking at, at options that were um, three to six months out, okay? in time. So I would look for those options three to six months out and I would look for those charts on weekly. Now you can use it on a weekly chart. You can use a three day, you can use whatever you want. I kind of prefer the weekly. And the reason is, is, is if I'm going to position trade, I'm going to position trade. I don't want to hedge my bet. I don't want to micromanage. I just want to Put these trades together and see if I can put together these longer term positions. Okay. So I started out with these, those three to six month time frames in options. And as I grew my portfolio and grew into this, um, this idea, this plan, I started, started feeling more and more and more comfortable with my position trading to the point where I'm, you know, commonly five, seven, if I'm really, if the market's really doing well, I'll have even more of my uh, positions on that are those longer term trades, those longer term 
positions that give me that nice buffer to the day-to-day -day rigors of swing trading. Okay, where we start building those really nice profits into trades. And it doesn't require an awful lot of our attention. We don't have to focus on that, those charts every single day or every single hour of the day because we just let those trades continue to work. Now, when you start seeing trades where you're starting to put together, you know, a uh, $1,000, um, you know, $2,000, $5,000 profits in gains. If you're holding big dollars like this in a portfolio, is it going to be a little bit more comfortable trading those quick swing trades when you have these big profits sitting over there in that, in that um, position trading account? And the answer to that is yes. The answer to that is, is a big yes, because when you have those big, comfortable profits holding in some of these longer term trades, the swing trading becomes a little bit easier. Now, the other part of this that I think, um, well, Glenn, this is what I do and you can do whatever you want. Um, I divide my accounts up. And for, for people with small accounts, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to figure out your own percentage. But Glenn, I have about 80% of my money in what I call stay rich money. And those are the longer term, safer position trades, ETFs, longer term stocks, that kind of stuff. And I use 20% of my money for the higher risk swing trades and option trading. Swing, you know, swing trades with options and those kind of things. <clears throat> and I call this the get rich money. Now you're going to have to find your own comfortable balance. Okay. And there's times when I'm underinvested in this big time. Okay, so don't don't make I don't want anyone to think that there's times when I have the full 80% of this in a position or in position trades. I'm underinvested at times just like everyone else. Okay? But this is the ratio that works really well for me and here's the other thing, if I use 20% of my capital 20% of my capital for the higher risk trading, I never overdo it. And if I, if I take this account beyond a 50% invested in the swing trades, can you see if I've got 80% of my money over here? It's not a big deal. I have a comfort level with this. And keep in mind, I follow the same rules. The same rules that I always, that I talk about, three to 4% of my account. I have to be pretty darn confident to have three to four percent of this account, or excuse me, up to four percent. I mean, uh, to have four percent of my account into any one trade, I have to be pretty confident. So three to four percent of this goes into individual trades. Okay. Yes, my position trades are over here. Yes. Position trades are over there. Okay. So let's go back to that idea. If we can start picking up, and, and I want to tell everyone that you need to probably find somewhere around three trades over a period of time to really start beginning this idea. Now, if you're only looking for three trades, sometimes you can go out there and find three pretty good trades um, for that longer term setup relatively soon. And what I recommend is you take that small position. Don't try to overtrade this. Okay. Three per four. Uh, Denny, this is a, a hard and fast rule. I've used it forever. 
You can find this stuff in the videos. If you guys are confused with some of the basics of planning these trades and planning your portfolio, you need to go watch some of the videos that are out there already, okay? So that we don't get completely off the subject. But it's three to 4% of that account. Okay, so if you have a $20,000 account for your swing trading, how much can you put into that to each trade? Somewhere between about six to eight hundred dollars maximum that you can put into a trade. Okay. <clears throat> so start start with those one, two, three positions. Okay, where you can you can slowly build yourself into that into that position trading account look for those trades that have that really good setup now here's the thing about it and and here's the thing that just drives people nuts about position trading is the patience of it you have to wait for the trade and everyone thinks well that means what i'm doing is all i'm doing is just waiting weeks and weeks and weeks on a trade and sometimes that is true but it takes very little time to do that because how do we go about putting together good long-term trades? Guys, it's really pretty simple. Write this down, this statement right here, when I finally figured this out, this changed my trading life. And that is there can be no easier way to make money in the market than to simply find a stock that's trending and waiting for the next entry into the trade. You can see on this weekly chart here in Nike, how many weeks would you have had to have waited here for this entry signal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 15 weeks or so, maybe more. So how do you go about doing that? Well, just look at my chart. How do you go about doing that? It's pretty darn simple if you use TC2000. Most software, charting software, has the ability to place an alert on a trade. So we find those trending charts when we put them in a watch list. And then we take the time to mark up those charts. How hard is it to see this consolidation in here, put an alert on that chart and then wait. Just wait. Be patient. That's all you have to do. And then you catch these trades that go multiple months. So you have that watch list of those longer term positions, those stocks that are showing those beautiful, nice trends. Set them on a time frame that you want to trade. I think a three day is about the minimum you want to go for these position trades. You'll be in and out a lot more. And then <clears throat> mostly focus on I, me. I'm going to be focusing on the weeklies most of the time. Make sure that there's stocks that you can afford to trade. Make sure that there's stocks that have good options. There's no sense, if you want to be an option trader doing this, there's no sense in looking at stocks that don't fit you personally or have good option um, series contracts in them. Now, we know that option series is, um, stocks will, will be good for a while. Sometimes they'll fall out of being good option trades. But um, that's just managing your list. Well, not everything, Chris, you're going to find if you go through your S&P 500 list, tons of those are just going to stink on ice when it comes to options. A bunch of them won't even trade options. Why waste your time with those? You know, I it's out there for everyone. We've posted it. It's always in the chat on this, Chris, um, the CBOE list. 
the CBOE list. And go through that list and make up a quality list of those longer term trending charts. And mark up those charts. Okay. <coughs> well, Tcon, it really comes down to you you asked do you have a wider stop loss. If you're using a, a weekly chart, your stop loss is usually going to be a little bit wider. Okay. But it all depends on the setup. If we take a look at my AMD trade that I'm currently holding on AMD, entering into this area right in here, did that create an excessively wide stop loss? No, it's the pattern. It's the setup, right? Every chart's different. Every chart's different. We can find periods where the stop losses are crazy wide and put times when the stop losses are really, really close, like right in here. How hard was it to place an alert over here and wait for that move? Or this one right here. With, and all of these have stop losses that are very close. Don't make the excuse that, oh, it's just going to be two, so the stop loss is too wide, I can't do it. No, that's not true. It all depends on the price pattern and what you trade. Do I trade every price pattern out there? You guys know the answer to that. No, I don't. I don't even try. I look for those tight, concise patterns where I can get those good entries into trades without taking massive risk and put those trades on. <clears throat> okay? This isn't hard stuff. Now, what everyone wants is everyone wants me to give them a scan that is going to just bring them to that one trade today that is the, the perfect position trade. Guys, get past that because it doesn't exist. The best and easiest way to find these trades is to build that good quality watch list that fits you, mark up the chart, set alerts, and wait. Be patient for the trade. It doesn't require you to look at it every day. It doesn't require you to... Um, you know, be thinking about it every every minute of the day. Set the alert. Forget about it. Once a week, go through that list. Looking for new trades. Looking for new setups. Mark those up. Set your alerts and let the trade do what it needs to do. Now, Rick, yes, you can use <clears throat> weekly 3-8 trap setups. I've shown where you can, here I'm going to remove all the lines. I've shown where you can use the volatility stop wrapped around the 17 EMA, that trendinator, to help you find these trades. There's the trade right there, right guys? You can use that to help you find these trades. You can use a simple moving average crossover. 17 EMA crossing over a 34 is probably going to give you a trend. Going to give you that break to show you something new, something different in a chart. And if we can put together um, these positions, then we get the opportunity to really put on some amazing trades. I've I've shown this several times and um, everyone in, in right way options, um, and this has been a while back, but uh, um, saw me take the profit on a position in Home Depot back over in here where I took $10,000 out of that trade. And I want you to look at this pattern. If you look at that pattern, it's the same pattern we trade all the time. The risk in this trade was not high. Stop, I mean, entry signal. 
stop loss down below here. Okay. I want you to notice in these kind of charts, when you get those big moves, oftentimes look at this entire move one week, two weeks, three weeks. There's a little tiny black candle there. Four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, one little doji black candle, one. Is that hard to manage? The hardest part about managing that is managing your emotions in the trade, right? Because this thing is a massive winner. And managing the emotions out of that massive winner is the hardest part. Can you guys see the opportunity that is setting up or did set up here? The opportunity that may be setting up here, breaking through resistance, a little rest or pullback, and the opportunity that Home Depot can continue to follow this trend. How long will that take? I don't know. But I know that if I'm patient and wait for it, I have the opportunity of more $10,000 wins. And if it's not 10,000, it's 1,000, it's, it's 1,500, it's 2,000. In trades like that, okay? <clears throat> yes, Disney, Walmart, UAA, they're all in my longer term holds. You guys know that I closed BDX talked about that I've been in that trade I got into that trade in 2013 right down in here multi-year breakout I had no idea that this trade was going to produce this way it was just another position trade that I put on okay just another trade that I put on. Uh, Bob, our, um, one of the things that you, get, you know that I do is I will look at market sectors. Okay, I will look at those market sectors more for the opportunity to find that next trade. Okay. Now, if you're looking at market sectors and starting to see one really starting to trend, here's a, here's a common problem with position trading that people do is they put too many or too much trade too many things. If let's say for example this is um, SMH, okay, we had that beautiful trend. Uh oh, there we go. Had that beautiful trend in SMH, and they'll put too much of their portfolio into just one sector. You know, if we're only looking for three to five, wouldn't it be wise to take something like this and then find out what makes up SMH? Now you can just buy SMH. But take a look at the stocks that make up SMH and find out what is really moving this index, this ETF, not an index, this ETF. Find out what's really moving it and look for some of those stocks that are in there. Okay, now remember, you can do this with ETFs easily because one of the things we have to talk about is the challenges around earnings, right? Holding a longer term trade around earnings. We're gonna talk about that. And we have to think about the challenges um, of of how we how we deal with that in protecting our trade. Okay, but if you trade an ETF, you don't have those challenges because the ETF itself smooths out that volatility of the individual stock. So can you do this? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think you could make. Um, a, 
a tremendous portfolio and do nothing but trade sector ETFs. Just follow the trend. Find the stock that's trending, the ETF that's trending, and just wait for the next entry into the trade. Entry, 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 entry. This would have been really difficult to enter any of this up here until we got about into there. But you start moving through these. There's entries into these trades all the way up. Notice that this run right in here lasted more than two years. This run, almost two years. Great profits can be made during that those periods of time. Okay, so look for those sector ETFs. Now let's get into some of the nitty gritty here of the details of the price action and how we enter, how we take care of these trades, what we do. All right, <clears throat> so I'm. You guys know that I'm always looking for the trend. That's what I'm. That's what's most important to me. And a trend for me doesn't begin until the first high or low gets placed in. A stock could be moving down, moving down, moving down, moving down, and I don't care until that stock finally rallies and puts in that lower high and shows buyers stepping in. This is the end of the downtrend at the beginning of the uptrend. Okay. So that is the earliest place I'm going to be looking for those trades for that longer term move. I'm not going to try and speculate on bottoms. I'm not going to play that game. I don't need to play that game. That's for institutions to play. That's their job. Our job is just, just, just to wait on them. Wait on them to tell us that they're starting to support the stock and then I'm going to follow it up. Okay, so as you can see, we get that pattern in the trade. Or I want to see the stock that is already trending and just continuing to move in a nice pattern where I can continue to wait for those entries into that trade. Uh, if you're going to position trade, get out of this idea the stock is up so much that it has to fall. That is just not true. If that were true, there was no possible way in BDX. I could have entered in 2013 and still held the trade clear over here into 2018. It's just not true. Okay, you never know how far a stock is going to go. Stocks like this, institutions don't give up on stocks like this. They stay with them. It's the institutional money that keeps them moving. Every month, they get these great big piles of money that comes in from 401k plans and stuff like that. And they have a specific amount that they invest in all of these companies that they're supporting. Every month, they get that support. All of that 401k, all of that money keeps rolling in and they say, well, there's nothing reason, no reason to stop buying this. And they just keep buying it month after month after month after month. They get the institutional support. They're not going away. Their commitment to these are incredible. And all we got to do is follow it. Okay. So looking into those trades, those positions, what are we going to look for? Well, you guys know that if I find that trending chart, we get that stock to move up, find that lower entry, I get that nice setup here where I have a risk that I can tolerate. That means my stop loss can be something relatively tight. I don't have to risk too much in the trade. I'm going to go into the option chain and I'm going to start looking for an option somewhere around that 70 delta area. Okay, now it all depends in the length of time that you're willing to trade this. If you're looking for a three month contract that gets you three months out, you probably want to be thinking somewhere in the 70 to 80 range. Okay, 
you want to be looking for that in this range. So if you have a 72, 73, 75, that might be the perfect place as long as you have enough open interest in the trade. That might be that perfect place to give you that nice entry into that shorter term trade. But if you look out a full year and you're looking at a leap option with a beautiful entry into the into that trade, if that comes in at a 67 delta, should you throw that one out or just ignore that completely? It's the 67 delta that just has the huge open interest. The answer to that is no. You want to pay attention to that. Okay, because that longer term, you have more time to just allow this to move along and it's up its course. Okay. In right way options, when we did the big trade on uh, on Microsoft, we bought that trade with a 69 delta, if I remember correctly. We paid nine dollars and nine cents. I do remember that nine dollars and nine cents a share for that trade. And that position we held for the better part of a year. And when we finally exited that position, we had a 99% return. Okay, that's the kind of trades that I'm talking about. Those really easy to enter positions that give you those great returns. Now let's talk about this idea. When you trade um, long-term positions with stock trades, it's a little bit difficult to take profits, right? Now, you know, you, you can buy 100 shares and the stock rolls up and you can sell off part of that. And then it pulls back and you can buy some more. So you can play that, you can continue to sell off some, buy some more, add to trades, those kind of things. But it's much easier to do in options. Okay, because let's say down over here, you buy that option contract that has 72 deltas in the trade. Month and a half later, maybe more, you're, you pick that trade just right. And over here, you're looking at an option contract that you're holding somewhere around 89 deltas. Okay, it's rolled up. You're in a great profit here. You've probably got 60, 70, 80 plus percent gain in this trade, maybe more on this position. So how do you take a profit in this? Well, let's say you own the January contract. Okay, and this one down here that you bought was a January 30 strike. So you own the 30 strike on this trade. Now this trades up here, maybe around 45 bucks. Well, what you can do is sell your January 30 strike and then look for that next option in the same series because there's plenty of time left in this trade, right? We've got, let's say we've got 300 days or 200 days to expiration on this. And then we roll the trade up. So we go from the 30 strike and maybe we close this trade. We buy the January 40 strike Okay, and in doing so, take a profit. Okay, let's say this one's worth 15 bucks and this one's worth 10. Okay, so we just took a $5 profit and stayed in the trade. Just roll your contracts up and out in that position so you can take profits along the way, put some money in your account, all right?
Now let's go one step further on this. If you want to get involved in this, you do not have to get involved in this. Is that those times where the stock kind of peaks and starts that process of pulling back, stock peaks and starts pulling back, this might be the time where you feel more comfortable in taking some of those profits. So you roll that trade maybe right in here, expecting that rest or pullback, because we've had a nice move up, roll that trade, and then go out and look for an option somewhere around 30 deltas or less. And by the way, don't be afraid to take less than 30 deltas. I think a lot of times what we try to do is we try to, we always want to get the biggest money possible, right? Sometimes we, we trap ourselves by trying to get something too close, too tight, try to get too much money. Remember, we want to stay in this trade if we can. Let the trend work. Okay, so I'll sell those calls against the position. I'll allow this to move back or consolidate. You guys have seen me do this now four times in AMD. Four times in AMD, I've taken short call profits on this trade. Just following that trade, that trend, allowing the trade to work and continuing to do this. You don't have to, Judy. I typically, I typically do when I do a full roll. But let's say you have, Judy, you, you've gone in uh, initially into the trade and with 10 contracts. Is there anything stopping you? You know, um, you buy 10 into this trade, the stock works for you, rolls up, moves back, rolls up. You, you decide, hey, it's time to take some profits out of this trade. Is there anything wrong with doing a roll, selling 10 and buying five back, taking more profit? No. You can sell that 10, buy five, let the stock roll back, find that next entry signal, and add back five later on, right? Do you have to go back in all the way? No. We just want to stay with the trade. So you can certainly do that roll with a smaller amount, taking more profit into the trade. Now, typically, if I'm confident in the position, if I have that really nice position trade moving along, I'm just going to continue to roll the same numbers. But that's a, completely up to you. There's nothing wrong with going that other direction, decreasing that trade. Okay, now let's talk about earnings. <clears throat> earnings are always a concern for us, right? How many, you know, when we look at, um, that old Microsoft trade where we entered this position back here, we held through multiple earnings reports. So how did we do that? Well, one of the things that I'm always going to do is I'm gonna be looking at um, protecting this trade. Now, to do this, you wanna have a profit in the position. I don't want to protect a trade that has no profit. So, if you enter a position for a longer term and you're in that trade, and it just really hasn't performed for you, and there's very little dollars in this trade and earnings is coming, it's probably the better idea to just close the trade. Okay, there's just not enough in that, in that stock, unless you have something really, that really good idea that this stock has been trending so long uh, that you think it's gonna go well, but I would prefer to just close that trade. But if I'm in that position where I have these really nice profits, 
stock has moved up like we wanted to. I've got 20, 30, 40% gains in this trade. Let's just call it 30% gains in this trade. I have profit in this position and I want to stay in this longer term trade. Okay, then what I do is I go over and I look for options, uh, put options to protect the trade. Because what does a put option, what's the contract rights in a put option if you buy a put? Put option says you have the right to sell a stock at a specific price within a specific period of time, right? So let's look at, like, let, let's just go to AMD. Let's say AMD is coming up on earnings. <coughs> Now what I'm going to do, we all know that the open, uh, not the open interest, but the implied volatility, the IV goes up right ahead of earnings, right? That implied volatility starts to spike. So we'll start to see these short-term options be really high in implied volatility. I will avoid those completely. I don't wanna be placing a hedge with those. I usually look out into the front month and if I have to go a little bit further, I will. But I go out into that front month and I look for an option contract that protects the trade. Okay, so I'm in a 20, right now, I'm in a 25 strike call on AMD because I took my original January, let me show that. I took my original January 20 strike, strike contract and I rolled it to take profit, meaning I sold this one and I bought this one. Taking profit in the trade. That's, that's that roll that I was talking about. Okay, and then if I were coming up on earnings, I would take that front month because I'm in the 25 strike, I could say, what do I want to protect in this trade? How much do I want to protect in this trade? How much money am I willing to spend to protect this trade? If I pick up this option right here and I pay $1.10 a share for this option right here, this option says that I have the right to sell this stock at $28 a share. If I have the $25 strike, am I making money? I've locked in a $3 profit on the trade, right? Minimum. Now I will pick this up very, very close to the earnings event. The day before, the day of earnings, something like that, I will buy that option. Okay? Now, a couple scenarios happen here. Earnings event occurs. The stock does what you want it to do. It moves up. Okay? You had a good earnings report. All you have to do is come over here and sell this option now. Get rid of it. It will cost you some money. There will be a loss here if the stock moves up. But that loss is more than covered by your long-term position. Because think about this. You're buying a put option position with a delta in here that is low. You have a low delta position. On your long-term option, you're in a high delta position. So the stock moving up more than compensates for the loss here. Does that make sense, guys? Understanding that? <clears throat> where do I want to lock in my stop loss, T? That's the price of the option and where I want to lock in my stop loss. Because remember, the put option is a perfect stop loss. OK, 
Okay. So where do you want to put your stop loss in and how much, how much are you willing to pay to protect it? Okay. So if I have a delta position in my long trade of 75 deltas or better, and that stock moves up a dollar in a good earnings report, I've made 75 cents a share, right? On the trade. That's what the delta tells me. I've actually made a little bit more than that. In this option, if the stock moves up a dollar and I have a negative 36 delta on this, I'm going to lose somewhere around 36 cents a share on this trade. So I bought the insurance. And by the way, you, sh you don't have to lose all of this because if you go back over and sell this to close the trade, if you're right on the direction, you're protected in your trade. You actually come out dollars ahead on that position. You could sleep through the earnings report. You didn't have to worry about it. Okay. Yes, there's going to be some volatility crush, Chad, but that's why I use the front month. I don't use the really close-in options because those, those really early close-in options are going to have that really high implied volatility. The front month options will have an elevated implied volatility, but it will be much less. And like I said, I'll go even further than the front month if I have to, to avoid that big volatility crush. Okay. So what do we do if the market goes against us? The earnings report is bad. Well, we can do a couple of things, right? Because buying that put option gives us the right, but not the obligation to, to, to sell the stock, right? We could look at the chart and say, hey, this pullback is just pulling back to the, you know, to the last support. In the stock, the stock has been moving up. The earnings event happened. It wasn't a bad earnings event at all. Just wasn't a great earnings event. The stock starts to pull back and finds an, a big area of support in here and stops right there. Well, then you could make the choice. Well, I'm just going to close this for a profit on the trade. And then let's see if this can move on back up. You have that choice here. If it just gets pummeled, if it's just pounded down, the stock gaps lower, just drives a whole bunch lower, what do you do? Well, you have an option contract. I have an option contract on AMD that says I have the right to buy it at 25. I have an option contract that says I have the right to sell it at 28. So what do I do? I exercise this contract and exercise this contract and collect my profit. I bring in the stock and I close the trade. Okay? So I have that perfect protection in the trade. I get I have the right to sell it at 28. I've locked in my gain. Doesn't matter how far this goes. If this falls to 10, I still have the right to buy it at 25 and sell it at 28. Does that make sense? Now what I'll tell you is more often than not, if you've got that good trending chart, more often than not, if you have that good trending chart, it's going to be the first version that we talked about where you're just going to close that protection on the trade. Just close the protection on the trade. And allow that trade to continue to work. Because remember, we're working those long-term, those really consistent 
good trends. We don't want to be in that stock that's just always in the news, right? If it's a stock that's just always in the news, we know we're going to get these hyper moves up and down. If we're looking at those good quality companies with good options in them, we catch those trades and we just take really nice profits in those positions. You know, one of the things that you, you guys have probably begun to pick up on is how much over the years I've traded Coke. And even though Coke, this chart is not a beautiful chart. How often we take profits or make money in Coke on just these little moves because it's not in the news. It's not it's 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 cheap to trade. It's an easy, it's an easy way to reach in the money and pull out some capital. We want to think about those longer term trades in that same fashion. We want to look at those really simple longer term trades. those places where we can get those really good potential returns. Okay, and just look for those entries. Look for those Home Depots. Look for those um, stocks that, you know, they just perform. The Nikes, the Procter & Gamble's, the Pfizer's, the, you know, the Visa's, the MasterCard's. All of those kind of stocks that um, I would say at one point in time, you know, like Verizon was great for this. At one point in time, it hasn't been for a long time, though. Verizon's been a mess. But you can see there's been times when Verizon is fantastic. <clears throat> or as Arnold would say, that is fantastic. <laughs> Okay. So look for those good trends. And like I said, it's really not that hard to put that list together of those good trends. You know, let's just, just for a really quick exercise, and you guys know that I do this quite often. I'm going to remove all of that. And I'm just going to bring up a list of the diamonds. Do you guys think there may be an opportunity that could be setting up here in UNH? Not ready yet, but there's that protracted pullback, and we're starting to break through. If this breaks out and holds in here, could there be an opportunity for a long-term upside move in UNH? I think the answer to that is yes. There's really no difference in this than there was in this. This was a little bit more concise and consolidating then this was choppy and wild. But look at the moves. Okay. More of them in here. Yes, if it flips, if it flips, it can be a downtrend. Now, I will tell you, it's perfectly fine to do the longer-term positions for long-term downtrends. Please keep in mind it requires just a little bit more focus, and it requires a little bit more, um, um, well, what's the good word for it? it? It just requires a strong constitution because we know when a stock falls, there's more volatility in it. That's okay if you're willing to hold that, you just have to have that strong stomach on those falls, okay? Because they can become very, very violent. But that's perfectly acceptable. There's a great example of that um, not that long ago in like CMG. There's that long downward move here in CMG. Just a long, steady decline in that trade. You can see it in stocks like currently Ford trying to come back up. There's that long, steady decline in Ford.
yeah, GE might be one. There's that decline. So it works just the same now. In these, you want to take the rally back to resistance. The rally back to resistance is your entry into the trade. Okay, rally back to resistance, rally back to resistance. That's your entry into the short. But it can work exactly the same way. Now I'll tell you what will happen in these is because of the higher, um, the higher volatility in these sell-offs like this, you'll find that you can make even more money in the downward moves faster and you may be rolling those contracts more often than you would in a longer term trade. You know, the old saying, stare, uh, stocks take the escalator up, but they take the, you know, the, the window going down or the elevator shaft going down. So you'll, you'll roll those trades more often, but they work just the same way. Okay, so you start going through you know, going through a list like um, an index or through your watch list and start looking at those trades in a different way, you start seeing opportunities then for that longer term. Okay, that longer term trade where you can um, just take advantage of, of that move. It, it, and it's not that hard, right? It's just not that hard um, to find those big trends and I've just got a list here. There's PayPal. Could you have asked for a better entry point right in here? How much tighter of an entry could you have gotten right here? It's the same pattern, right? It's the same trade that we do all the time. But notice in this, this is months in this trade with one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven candles over multiple months that were even black. If you're going to use puts for those long-term trades, Jay, how do you use around an earnings event? How do you protect yourself for a stop? Use call options. If you're in the money on a put option, that's the right to sell the stock, right? If you buy a call option, that's a perfect protection for the put. Just do the opposite. So for me, Jay, the only time I'm going to be using puts versus a stop loss is if there's an event coming. If there's an event that I cannot, you know, the market can become very, very volatile. It's an unknown. That's the only time I'm going to be using a put for a stop loss. Otherwise, I'm just going to be setting my conditional order for a stop loss. Close the trade if it breaks down a certain level of support. The more and more profit you build into these trades, guys, you can relax your stop losses. They don't have to be so tight. You don't have to micromanage them so closely. Relax that stop loss. Allow the trade the opportunity to move around. Okay. Jen, I'm going to request you when we get this video posted, you go back and watch it because uh, apparently you've come late. The whole purpose of today on the position trading is we were talking about how to utilize options for position trading. That's what today's class is about. I 
I have done both. I have. It all depends on how much capital I have available, what I want to do with the trade. You can say, look, I'm going to position trade and all I'm going to do is do options and use options. Perfect. You don't have to make the decision to use a stock trade. But sometimes you might want to take the option to use a stock trade because of the big dividend yield. In owning an option, you don't get the dividends. Owning the stock, you do. Okay? So you might find that trade that you want to take advantage of those nice dividend yields. It depends, Sean. It, it really depends. <coughs> you know, that's, an op that's such an open-ended question because you can't answer that unless you're looking at the stock itself, the price action of the stock itself at that time. Every, every price move is different, right? There's no hard and fast rule to that. That's why I gave you all those different ways that you could manage that trade. You have to make that judgment call at the time. What's, what's going on in that position? You know, and, and Richard, you might be right. Um, on Ford, because this isn't an, uh, it, it's not an expensive stock, right? Would it be better to just own Ford? Just buy the stock. Or you can collect the dividend. You can still sell calls against it. You can still handle this trade the same way. And here's the other thing. A lot of people forget about this. Just because you own Ford, does that prohibit you from buying call options on Ford to take advantage of the big breakout moves? No, I've done that in UNH, I mean uh, UAA all along. I get these big setups and I enhance the profit of my trade by buying calls. By buying puts. Okay, so just because you own the stock position, it doesn't prevent you from trading options around that position. Does that make sense? So you're not prohibited from doing both. And I commonly do both. Yeah, selling those upside calls, out of the money calls, and also buying, adding to the trade, buying those call options at the right time, right? If you've held the trade as long as I have WMT, okay? If you've held the trade as long as I have in WMT, do you kind of get a sense if you watch this, how this thing moves, how it works? If you're watching this, can you catch these entries into these trades? Uh, particularly if I add in the long calls that I've bought during that period of time, Steve. I, the covered calls, I don't think, covered calls wouldn't cover the cost of the trade yet. But if I add in the profits from the long calls that I've traded and the, and the long puts that I've traded around this stock, I would say yes. Yeah, that's what she, that's what he's saying, Kimberly. He has he has been long term in Costco. He's talked about that many times, and he sells call options against it. Mm 
Look at these beautiful moves in here. Can you guys make money from this? And here's the other part about position trading that I think a lot of people miss out on. <clears throat> I don't know too many people that came to trading with the idea that I want to be stuck in front of a computer full time all day, every day. Most people came to trading with the idea of the lifestyle of a trader. Position trading can afford you that lifestyle, can provide it. You enter a position in here into Costco. How much, whoops, doggone thing. <clears throat> How often are you going to have to manage this trade if you enter one of these positions into this move? It's pretty simple, right? This goes months. Months and months and months. That's the good stuff. Where you have great big profits in your portfolio and you don't have to mess with it much. Okay? So I'm going to go back here for just a second before we finish up. I want to go back and I want to remind everyone that don't get yourself into this idea that I'm going to pick up a long-term portfolio and I'm going to be the best at this tomorrow. That's not going to happen. Okay? It is not going to happen. You have to start slow. You have to start with that one, two, or three positions that you start working in that longer term direction to build the confidence in doing this and feel comfortable with it. And then you start building up toward that seven plus type portfolio where you're doing this and holding these trades, putting more of your capital to work in more of a passive way. Okay. And yeah, three day is fine. <clears throat> I think one of the things that, you know, the three day is that whole idea, Lee, that you're going to you're going to be able to manipulate or manage them a little bit better because of the short term. Just remember, the shorter term, the three day, is going to have more noise than the weekly. So here's what I'm going to recommend. Once you're in those trades, once you're in those positions, and those profits are coming into play, whether you use a weekly or a three day, turn on the hike and ashy and manage that trade. Avoid that intraday noise or that back and forth movement in the chart. Avoid it by turning on the hike and ashy and just staying with the trend. Don't over micromanage. And I don't care if you use the three day, this is a three day, or if you use a weekly. Doesn't matter. Just manage that position. Okay? Once you're in that trade, manage it this way. Because is it, look at this weekly on, on this period here. How hard is that to stay in? There's not one black candle. Not one. From April through the through sometime in September here. Not one black candle. So it gives you that ability to manage without that emotion. Just set your stop losses, right? And let the trade work. And by the way, if I shut off the Trendinator on here, can you use the just the standard volatility stop to help you on that trade and setting those stop losses? Yes.
if you do it on the three day, just notice that during that same period of time right here, there was a little bit more back and forth in that period. <coughs> <coughs> but it works the same, right? This is the Hike and Ashy with a volatility stop. That's a fact, Sean. If you're working full time, this gives position trading gives you the opportunity to really do something special in the market and have the time to do it. Catching those big moves, those big trends. And every once in a while, every once in a while, guys, you'll catch one like this that just goes and goes and goes. Let's go to the weekly on that. Less volatility in it. It just goes. Okay. So thanks guys. I hope you got something out of that today on how you can utilize position trading to maybe enhance your, your trading considerably maybe bring you a little bit more comfort into your swing trading and give you the opportunity to really roll up some nice profits in a comfortable way. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I will try to get this rendered and put together um, sometime this weekend and up on the website. I still have to get last Tuesdays up too. But I will try to get that taken care of and up on the YouTube channel um, and um, um, the website. So I'll work on those this weekend, try to get that done. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you guys a bunch. Truly, truly do. It means a lot to me. And, um, you know, consider a little position trading. Might just... Um, might just make you feel a lot more comfortable as a trader. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an awesome weekend. We'll talk to you soon.